Now we have got a comprehensive example on the consolidation of a phone operation. On 31st of December 2004, M, whose functional and presentation currency is dollar, acquired 75% of the ordinary share capital of R, which was situated in a foreign country with functional currency LC. At the day of acquisition, this subsidiary's share capital was LC 120 million and the retained earnings were LC 150 million. We don't have any other equity information, therefore, equity at the day of acquisition for this foreign subsidiary is LC 270 million. Equity in figures means net asset, so the book value of the net asset at the day of acquisition, LC 270 million. We have got all the information, right? So this is for M and R. This is the M's figures in 2005 in terms of the income statement and statement of return earning. This is for R, this is for M, and this is for M's financial position. We got all the information. Now, it is 31st of December 2005. So the question says that the book value of the house assets and liability approximated their fair value except for PPE. For PPE, the fair value is bigger than the book value by LC 15 million. Therefore, there has been a fair value increment, LC 15 million. This PPE should be depreciated over five years. And we found also the test weight, therefore we have to account for the deferred test liability at 20% test weight. There has been an intra-group loan balance, and this intra-group balance will have an interest charge, therefore this intra-group balance and the intra-group interest income expense should be eliminated later. <coughs> the question say that, as we have said before, this foreign subsidiaries functional currency is LC. They have prepared the financial statement in LC, but we want to consolidate in dollar. We want to consolidate in dollar because parents' presentation currency is dollar, so we want to consolidate and present our financial statement in dollar. If this is the case, any transition from LC to dollar is a transition from the functional currency to presentation currency. So therefore, for this example, closing way method, closing way method apply. The question also say that goodwill should be accounted for using the parcel goodwill method. That means there should not be any goodwill component for the NCI. We are asked to prepare the consolidated financial statements on 31st of December 2005. If this is the case, first we translate the income statement and statement of retained earning. Translation from LC to dollar, we use closing way method. Therefore, all income expenses should be translated using closing way, using average way. Right? Closing way method means income expense should be translated using average way. Notice the, how it denotes the exchange way. It is LC to $1, LC to $1. The average weight is 1.05 LC to dollar. Therefore, in order to translate from LC to dollar, we should divide the figure by 1.05. So this should be a division. So 350,000 divided by 1.05, 333,333. Cost of goods sold divided by average weight. Expenses. Divided by average weight, depreciation divided by average weight, exchange loss divided by average weight. Actually, all the profit before tax, even taxation, and up to profit after tax, all our income expenses should be divided by the average weight. After the profit after tax, 50,000 divided by 1.05 is 47,619. We have got the retained earnings. This is a very special year because this is the first year after the day of acquisition. Therefore, this all pending retained earnings actually is the retained earnings at the day of acquisition. At the day of acquisition, 
the exchange rate was one to one. Therefore, one hundred fifty thousand divided by one is one hundred fifty thousand dollar. When we add the profit after tax with the retained earnings, we got the closing retained earnings. Next year, this closing retained earnings will become the opening retained earnings. Right, so this two hundred thousand translated into one hundred ninety-seven thousand six hundred nineteen cannot be translated using one single exchange rate because you use different exchange rate for the year. So retained earning is an accumulated figures which accumulate it year by year. <coughs> After we translate the income statement and the statement of retained earnings, we should translate the balance sheet. This is the statement of financial position. So we are still using the closing rate method. So therefore, all assets and liabilities should be translated using closing rate. At the year end, 31st of December 2005, it is 1.1 LC to $1. So that's why it should be divided by 1.1. So 380,000 divided by 1.1, 345,455. So all assets, all liability divided by the closing rate. <coughs> equity, equity should use actual exchange rate. The relevant exchange rate for the share capital is the exchange rate at the day of acquisition. That means one to one. So 120,000 divided by one is $120,000. Retained earnings, we have got the retained earnings figure from Statement of retained earnings, 197,619. So 197,619. And luckily, our balance sheet cannot balance. We know that there is a balancing figure because we have used different exchange rate to translate for different items. So there will be a balancing figure. We call it exchange difference. Under closing rate method, exchange difference goes to Equity translation reserve. Therefore, we have a balancing figure for the translation reserve being a debit 26,710. If the question does not ask you for a reconciliation or analytical check, it should be a debit 26,710, simply a balancing figure. If the question asks you to reconcile or explain, we can explain the difference because we know that why we have got this debit transition reserve because we use different exchange rate for the net asset. The opening net asset is 270,000. <coughs> opening net asset for the subsidiary. This is closing. The opening is 120 plus 150. That means 270 and the closing is 320. So we start from opening book value of the net asset 270. On that day, the exchange rate is one to one, so 270 divided by one is 270 thousand dollar. Why it increased to 320? Because we have got the profit. How much is the profit? The profit is 50,000 profit after tax. It has been translated to 47,619. So translated at the average way, therefore 47,619. If nothing happened, the closing net asset should be 317,619. However, it should be denominated, it should be kept in the functional currency, therefore it should be 320,000. All assets and liability should be translated using closing rate. Closing rate is 1.1. So 320,000 LC divided by closing rate 1.1 is 290,909. So the net asset should be written down. Written down is something no good. So it's a debit to the translation reserve. We match it. After, we may start to prepare our consolidation journal entry. So we may first calculate the goodwill. How much is the goodwill? Goodwill is what we pay minus what we get. 
So in terms of dollar, if we want to consolidate this in dollar, we may calculate in dollar. Dollar, yes, how much we pay. In the financial statements, we know that the investment in subsidiary is 285000 The question did not say anything else otherwise, so we assume that this is the cost of investment, $285,000. So we start with this $285,000. There should be a 25% non-controlling interest. We don't have the information yet because non-controlling interest should be using partial group methods. That means non-controlling interest should be measured as a proportionate share of the identifiable net asset. So how much is the identifiable net asset? Share capital, 120. Retained earnings, 150. This is 270. And then we have got the 50,000 for the fair value adjustment. 20% test weight, so the fair value increment after test is 50,000 times 1 minus 20% test weight, this means 40. So 40 plus 270, so the fair value of the net asset after the first test liability is 310. What we pay minus what we get is goodwill. So 310 is the book value of the net, fair value of the net asset. 25% we calculate the NCI. So NCI is the proportionate share of the fair value of the net asset being $77,500. So if we prepare the consolidation journal entry, we credit investment in subsidiary $285,000. We credit NCI. We debit share capital. It is $120 million LC divided by 1, this means $120,000. We debit between earnings, $150,000. We debit PPG, $50,000. We credit deferred test liability, $10,000. We credit NCI. They cannot balance, so the balancing figure is goodwill. The same as what we have calculated, $52,500. If the question only asks for the financial statements, consolidated financial statement at the day of acquisition, this is the only journal entry. However, we are asked to prepare one year after. Therefore, one year after, for this fair value increment for PPE, PPE is a depreciable asset. It should be depreciated over five years. So therefore, the 50,000 should be depreciated over five years. This means 10,000 every year. Originally, the 50,000 has been translated using one to one. For depreciation, this is closing rate methods. Depreciation should be translated using average way. Average way is 1.05. So 10,000 divided by 1.05, 9,524. So that's why we should debit depreciation being additional depreciation based on the fairway adjustment. We credit accumulated depreciation. When we have got this PPG, there has been a deferred tax liability. So therefore, now we have to reverse part of this deferred tax liability. So because we debit depreciations, we credit tax expense, 20% tax weight. Because we credit accumulated depreciation, we debit deferred tax liability, 20% tax weight. This is for additional depreciation on fair value adjustments. Now we start to translate everything. We have translated for the book value of the net asset. Now we translate for the goodwill. How much is the goodwill? When we calculate the goodwill, we know that actually goodwill should be denominated in the functional currencies of the foreign operation. The functional currencies of the foreign operation was LC. Why? Our currency LC, and then we have been told that the functional currency is actually LC. Why? So it should be denominated in LC, and therefore it should be 52,500 LC. 
on the day of acquisition, it was one to one. So 52,500 divided by one, $52,500, right? But one year after, Goodwill is an asset. So all assets should be translated using Colson Way. One year after, on 31st of December 2005, Colson Way is 1.1. 1 .1. So 52,500 should be divided by Colson Way, 1.1. 1 .1. Therefore, it should be 47,727. So divided. So we got translation loss, 4,773. Debit. So therefore, we debit translation reserve and we credit goodwill 4,773. So after we have translated for the goodwill, we continue to translate for the fairway adjustments. Always there has been fifth translation adjustments, right? So one is book value of net asset, fairway adjustments, and the goodwill. So now this is the fairway adjustment. If you can still remember, we have depreciated for the fair adjustments. So if nothing happened, it should be 40,476. The fair adjustment is an asset, so it should be translated using the closing way. Closing way is 1.1, so it should be translated at 1.1. So 40,000 divided by 1.1 is 36,364. So the fair adjustment should be written down. Therefore, we credit. PPE 4113 with debit translation reserve. And when we prepare the fair adjustments, there has been a deferred tax liability. Now we credit the PPE, therefore we should debit away part of the deferred tax liability, 20% tax rate. Because we debit translation reserve, we credit translation reserve, 20% tax rate. This is for the translation for fairway adjustments, but because this is not a wholly owned subsidiary, non country interest to share 25%, therefore we share 25% to NCI. On a last basis, the debits to the other comprehensive income transition reserve is 4113 minus 823. So 25% should be shared to NCI. This means 823. Therefore, we credit the transaction reserve 823 and we debit NCI. 25% share of the transaction reserve. Now we start to share the profit to NCI. So the question says that the translated profit after test is 47,619. This is what we have translated. NCI can share profit after test, but this 47,619 is on the reported profit. It should be adjusted if there has been any amortization or depreciation for the fair adjustments, and also it should be adjusted if there has been any unrealized intra group transaction from the subsidiary. We do have one fair adjustment. So therefore, there has been additional depreciation for the fair adjustments after tax. So the last figure is 7,619 being 9,524 times 1 minus 20% tax rate. So the adjusted profit, 40,000 share by NCI, 25%. So we debit profit to NCI and we credit the NCI for the 25% share of the profit. NCI share profit, NCI share also transaction reserve. For this transaction reserve or book value of the net asset, we haven't shared to NCI yet. The total is 26,710 debit. Therefore, to share to NCI, we credit transaction reserve being 25% of this 26,710 and we debit NCI. We share book value of the net asset we share the transaction reserve for the fair adjustments we don't need to share the transaction reserve on the goodwill because we are using parcel goodwill method so therefore goodwill has nothing to do with NCI if we are using full goodwill method 
for this transition we serve on goodwill, we should share the insight as well. So we share everything. Don't forget that we do have an intra group loan balance and intra group interest income and expense. Therefore, we eliminate. So in the subsidiaries book, we have got loan liability. So we debit away this loan liability. And in the parents book, we have got a loan receivable. So we credit away. So this is to eliminate intra group balance. We also eliminate for the intra group interest income and expense. 6% is the interest rate. So 6% on 30,000. Surely this is 1,800. So we debit away interest income. We credit away interest expense. We prepare all the journal entry and therefore we input all the journal entry into the worksheet and we complete our consolidated statement of financial position. So notice that there has been a transition reserve <coughs> for the owner of the parent. This is only for the owner of parent because N size figures include everything already. N size share of the book value of the assets, fair adjustments and the goodwill including also the translation reserve already. And we have got the consolidated statement of comprehensive income. So this is the case. If the question asks, actually you can analyze the NCI. So this is the analytical check for the NCI. And we have also understand that for the transition reserve, there has been three components, being one for the book value of the net asset, one for the fair adjustments, and one for the goodwill. This 27,272 represents the transition reserve only for the owner of the parent. So therefore, for the total transition reserve for the net asset, we share only 75% goodwill because this is part of good methods. All transition reserve belongs to the parent. For the fair adjustments, that 4,113, we share only our own 75% after test. So this is for the parent only. And when we have to prepare reconciliation for the NCI, book value of the net assets of the NCI, we can find the book value of the net assets for the NCI. So book value of the net asset for the subsidiary is 290,909. 25% goes to NCI. Book value of the net asset, 25% goes to NCI. Fair wear adjustments, fair wear adjustments was 36,364. Why? 36,364 after test, 25% goes to NCI. Why? 36,364 after test, 25% goes to NCI. So this is the book value of the net assets. This is the fair adjustment. There's no goodwill component for NCI because we are using partial good method and therefore we can reconcile the NCI as well as the translation reserve figures that we will find in the consolidated bandsheet.